So, and, you, and what are these dimensions exactly? Well, you could think about them as, I think of them as sub-personalities, but here's some other ways of thinking about them because we want to flesh this out a little bit. You could think of them as a frame of reference so that if you're an extrovert, and I was going to tell you the extroverted question, does being around groups of people make you energetic or does it exhaust you? And if, if you're the sort of person that, you know, will go to a party and interact with 20 people, then, then you have to go home and be by yourself for like two weeks, then you're introverted. Introverts are exhausted by social interactions. Extroverts are the opposite. They'll, they're, 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 they're energized by social interactions. And you know, you might be in the middle so that you can take it or leave it with regards to social interactions, but you're happy to go to them and you're happy to spend time by yourself. But a real extrovert, there'll be some of you in here. How many of you can't stand spending time alone? so there's only two that will admit it. Extroverts are more likely to admit that sort of thing too, by the way. But that's a really, that's a pretty canonical question for, for extroversion versus introversion. It's a very stable trait, by the way. It, it's, it manifests itself early in life and it's, it's stable across the age span. Not completely. Introverts can learn to be extroverted. The extroverts can learn to spend time on their own. I think that actually your capacity to expand your ability past the initial constraints of your biological temperament is something like the development of character or wisdom. You know, so if you're an introvert by nature and you learn how to be extroverted, then that expands your domain of competence. And if you're extroverted and you learn to be introverted, the same thing. But it's almost like, imagine a distribution of extrovert, introversion here, extroversion here, a normal distribution. You're set when you're young at somewhere along that distribution with some range around it. And I think what you do as you mature, if you develop your skills, is you expand that range, but you're set, the place at which you're set doesn't move that much. So, okay, so there's, so you can think about them as sub-personalities, you can think about them as frames of reference, so frame of reference would be something like, well, since you're extroverted, you value being with people. And so you're going to look at the world, for example, if you're extroverted, you come into a room like this, you think, oh, look, uh, it's a whole field of opportunity for social interactions. And if you're introverted, you think, well, maybe I'll go sit up in the corner and hope everybody leaves me the hell alone. But so, so it's an a priori set of perceptual structures that you bring to bear on a whole sequence of, in, of, of uh, environments. So for example, maybe you're high in openness versus low in openness. That's the creativity dimension. People who are high in openness tend to be artists and entrepreneurs. And open people will, look at other people as uh, opportunities to engage in interesting intellectual conversations. And so you can tell when you're talking to someone's o someone open, especially if they're very high in openness, because they're going to want to talk to you about ideas or about aesthetics. That's what it's going to go right away. So that's how they view you as a source of that sort of conversation. That's how they view the landscape. Someone who's high in neuroticism, which is a negative emotion dimension, is more likely to view the world as a place of threats to be to be protected against because they're they're more anxious and more prone to emotional pain. Uh, so anyway, so so that's the frame of reference issue. So there's there's something about your under, underlying fundamental psychological traits that determine or influence at least your value structures, and they they do it at the level of perception. They also tend to set your goals. So extroverted people have as one goal the opportunity to engage with other people. So extroverts love parties. They live for parties. They love to tell jokes as well. It's a, that's a very good behavioral marker of extroversion. Um, and so, they, they, because they value those sorts of things, they set them as goals in their life. Or you could say the extroversion operating within them sets them as goals within their life, depending on how deterministic you want to be about it. So, um, their patterns of behavior that's another, at a micro level, you know, I showed you that sort of hierarchy of, 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 of uh, value slash frames of references that ranged from micro behaviors up to high order abstractions. You can extract out uh, personality from, by looking at people's micro actions as well. And one of the papers that I want you guys to read that's, that's on the course website has to do with our investigation into behavioral markers of the big five traits. Yep.